right, that's all you. Awesome. Cool, hello everyone. Today I'll be talking about UX strategy and I'll talk about how um, companies um, and designers align and think of products before it gets developed, which is super important to make sure that you're solving the right problem and you're designing for the right customers um, in the right way. And, and toward the second part, I'll be going over like a whiteboarding workshop with some examples that I did from interviews in the past. And for me, I'm actually a UX design intern at Electronic Arts for both the summer and fall. I also founded Design Buddies and currently lead the design of it. And I'm also a student. I'm studying computer science and engineering at Santa Clara University, I'm not too far from all of you. Um, and I'm also from California, born and raised in the SF Bay area, San Jose, West San Jose specifically. I actually had some high school friends that went to UCSC as well, and some friends who did the game dev program. Um, and for fun on the side, outside of design, I run my own art business. So I used to table at anime conventions. I used to also, I also right now do a lot of social media and blogging. And so for this presentation, I'll be going over like what exactly is UX strategy and like why is it important, how to build one, like how it works in practice at companies. Um, and then I'll do a collaborative challenge, like I'll get the Figma link so you guys can all collaborate on like an interactive whiteboard. Um, actually, I used some of the examples of whiteboarding questions I did for Google's interview. Um, and later I'll end with a Q&A. And so what is UX strategy? So UX strategy is basically like the thesis of the product. It's like the plan approach for digital product into making sure that um, your team is all aligned with everything. So every time you are in anywhere in the process to develop your product, it's important to go back to the thesis and the main, the main overall goal um, of your product to make sure all the goals are aligned. So this is often used to defend design decisions when working with a team because for me as a, as a UX design intern at EA, I work with a lot of product managers and software engineers and leadership. So it's important to align on the overall goal to make sure that everyone um, stays on top of everything and to defend design decisions as well, to make sure it just like unites everyone on a common goal. And so really integrates just like business, like the product management side, tech capabilities from the engineering side and user needs from the UX designer and UX researcher side as well to really unite everybody towards a common goal. And so it's really important to make sure you're solving the right problem, prioritizing the right features, um, because oftentimes companies have a lot of limitations, like you want to ship products really fast, um, and you don't want to spend too much time on designing the wrong thing because you waste time and resources. Um, it also helps you stand up for competition because when you're developing UX strategy, you would look at um, what your competition is doing and what the users, and oftentimes your competition is where your users are at. So for example, at EA, um, we look at Riot, like a lot of people who play EA games also play Riot games. So that's why you look at what they're doing to making sure that we're using the similar patterns as um, their site as well, because we're designing for the similar demographic. Um, because ultimately, end of the day, it's important to care. It's important to design for the user because the users ultimately de determine the product success and drives the business up. So it's important to start from like, what does the user actually need? And does the product actually solve a problem for the users? Um, and also less time wasted to making sure that everything's aligned from the beginning before you start any wireframing, prototyping and development as well. Um, and also, helps guide the minimal viable product and help the, determine the features you want to use um, before you want to launch your product to be tested. And so UX basically is how a product works for users. Basically, and the first priority is you want to make sure it actually solves user need. It's actually useful. Um, and how easy it's for you. And then like after you determine like whether um, it fits a need, it's important to making sure it's easy to use, like making sure users know where to click, they don't get frustrated and quit the flow and like quit the product and stuff. Um, and lastly, you wanna care about delightful. So this is going down a list of priority and to think about. And delightful can mean using playful colors, using playful animations to make it really enjoyable experience for the users. Um, and strategy is basically like a plan to achieve these goals you want to achieve with your product and you want to think about like stand in the market and how do the users behave and what is the current pain points of the users um, where do you want to be like do you want to drive up revenue do you want more users in your product um, do you want to go into explore a new field and test it out 
and like how how do you want to get there and like an action plan and stuff so this is different from the business strategy business strategy is incorporates more like the budgeting and the marketing side and you watch the subset of the business strategy of the overall product and so it's important to consider like start with like where we are doing now like think of the customers because ultimately you're solving for the customers and think of their needs and how they perceive the product and also looking at what's out there and to making sure that um, you're like you stack, you know where you stack among them um, and like what are their and what are they doing in currently now and like the future to making sure you're staying on top of everything as well. Um, looking at industry trends um, for EA, I also keep keep up with all the like gaming trends and stuff and the current and the future to making sure you're staying aligned with the customers this still stays um aligned with the customer needs as well performance like how is a product performing currently if it's a new product uh, you don't have this yet but if you're like redesigning or remaking a product it's important to know like how how does it standing right now um, and also employees. So in a, in this, as a designer, um, you will rarely work with yourself. Um, you mostly is that like likely work with a team of like product managers and engineers. It's also important, um, even as a design leader, to like care how, how your employee is feeling because employee morale also determines a lot of the success of a product. His design is super interdisciplinary, so I work with a lot of people and is and making sure that everybody knows exactly what they're doing with their role. Um, and being affected with them. And also the overall organization of the company um, to making sure that this product actually aligns with the company goal. So an example I give is uh, one of my projects I did at EA was redesigning the EA help homepage because the users were, the customers were um, having struggles finding help that they need. They were really getting really confused with the flow. So I actually looked at other help sites of different games like Riot, Rockstar to see how they lay out their help page. And I noticed some similarities. Um, and define some common use of flows and I, and I added that to, I considered that um, in my redesign of the EA help page. I also looked at, I also tracked performance trends of different uh, metrics and stuff and also it fit the overall profile because so one, one of EA's mission is to reduce, overall mission is to reduce toxicity in the forums and people often when they get frustrated, they unleash their toxicity in the forums. So that's, that's how overall fits the redesign EA help homepage fits the organization profile. And so also on a high level, like where, where does, like why does this product matter and like how would this product drive to like the overall goal of the product? So goals, like making sure I've aligned goals, like principles, desired outcomes, objectives, and also how, how does this product fill a market need and making sure that it actually like um, solves a problem and adds some value to the overall world and the users. And on a high level, think about like what your vision statement is, basically like current and future objectives of the organization, like what are you doing now and what do you want to do in the future? The mission statement is more like a formal sub summary of like what you value and um, of an organization, like what you aim to be. And so how do we get there? Basically, like thinking about how you want to develop your roadmap. Think about like what you need. Do you think the team is configured correctly? Do you need to making sure you need to make sure you want more researchers? Um, like, for example, on my team at EA, we needed more researchers. So um, because we like a lot of designers were actually handling a lot of usability testing. So my team took on more researchers. Um, and making sure that everybody knows what they want to, what they're going to do and making sure that everyone is not like repeating the same thing. And so just thinking about what roles people on a, on a team to making sure that nobody is getting confused. There's no needs and also there's no people doing duplicate work. Um, and are we missing required skill set and, and there's like any like work standing in our way. So like any blockers and everything. So all these, these are all these things you want to consider when developing like a roadmap for a UX strategy. And so UX strategy kind of just like, and then this is like the whole design thinking process that you guys might've seen many, many times. And so UX strategy kind of fits over here when you're right in the beginning stages of your product and making sure you're solving the correct problem. You fit the business vision, user needs, tech capabilities before you move on. And because once you go into the prototyping and testing phase and implementation, it gets more expensive to change things. So it's good to like align on everything first before moving on further developing the product. 
And so usually like UX strategy, I know I just said a lot of like information, but it kind of boils down to like a document. Usually in this company setting, um, you'll like deliver a document highlighting the goals, guidelines, and priorities um, to making sure that you know about your problem and you know how success would look like and you know how to align metrics and stuff. Because oftentimes like the mistake I've made when I was beginning design is I, I was like, oh, I want to improve the user's experience. But then like, I don't know like how you want to measure that. So do you want to include like um, the task completion rate, retention rate, and just like metrics like that. So make sure you highlight these things because when you work in a real world, people always ask Ask you like also during interviews like how would you measure success and like how would you prove that this design actually works or how would you prove that your idea actually actually looks like the overall problem so think about how you would test it out um, and make sure you highlight that as well especially during interviews that's like the number one question I get asked um, and guidelines like making sure yeah you have like the tech constraints timeline because ultimately you can technically make anything um, but the it also like takes different time to make things so that's why they consider a timeline and stuff for the overall business and also working with engineering to making sure that what you're designing aligns with their tech stack and making sure that they know how to build it and they can build it on time um, just aligning with them as well and also prioritizing like you can ultimately create anything and there's like a lot of things to build um, but you should be able to prioritize what you should build first to making sure that you're solving the right problem collecting metrics and not building everything and getting confused overall and so now i'll talk about how to build one um, so ultimately you have, to you have to include all like research planning and testing and so for research, um, when you're thinking of that document, you definitely want to, this is kind of like the be beginning phases of doing a product. You want to interview all the stakeholders, UX research, um, user research, and looking at what your competition is doing and analyzing that. And so when you're interviewing stakeholders, these can be like employees, customers, um, leadership, and just like everybody involved in the product. Um, and investors and you want to ask like what's the scope like you want like for example I just I'll just use my EA help one and like scope of it like do you want like for me like I only designed I had to redesign like a few pages but instead of like redesigning the whole thing and the old login flow and stuff I just like focused on the like the landing page and the product page instead of like thinking about the login page and different use cases or like the search results page and like, how does it fit in the company's mission, mission like reducing toxicity because people get less frustrated and tickets and there's like less um, time spent for the company as well because people submit less help tickets. And like, what are the goals and objectives of this product and to making sure everything's aligned and what is the budget and like, and it also fits in the timeline of development resources, design resources, and like what defines success, meaning like people help, people are able to complete the task um, and like what success can the user experience deliver? Like people get less frustrated. And so the company spends less time overall resolving these tickets that they submit. And so it's important to like really align on these things in the beginning to making sure that you're like consulting the experts or consulting the investors or everybody involved um, and to really understand like what the product should be doing for your strategy. It's also important to look at the users, like the like overall customers, like who are the target users, what are their needs, the pain points, what devices are they using, like are they mostly surf surfing the tool on the web, are they on the app, are they on the mobile, um, and think of all these different touch points, because sometimes for EA, like if they're playing a game and they want to access the help page, it's important to have a mobile page as well, because they could be like lying on their TV on the PS4, and then they want to look for help, and then they often don't time oftentimes don't have the computer next to them. So that's why we also designed a mobile version for that help page as well. So just think about all these different touch points of the user and you'll find out all these things during interviews. So when we like surveyed users, we noticed that they were all oftentimes using accessing the site on mobile. So it's important to consider um, different, um, different devices that using as well to have different use cases. And like what problems do they need solved and how are they solving them so you, the users had problems finding help and currently they're just like submitting tickets and causing the company more time wasted and stuff and like why are and why aren't they using your product and to find out like like what is driving the customers away or to the product itself for existing products 
And also it's important to look at your competition because the users of your product use oftentimes also use the competition's product as well. And to making sure that you leave similar patterns because design is all about making things usable. It's different than art. So you don't have to create something new each time because it will confuse the users. So it's good to use common patterns and these common patterns can be um, can be researched or can be like determined by looking at common products which is your competition, um, looking at what they're doing, and is there also an opportunity to create a unique value proposition, meaning how would your product stand out among the competition, and what makes your product unique, and what drives, and how does that unique trait drive more customers to your product? And so now we're gonna do a Figma challenge. Um, and so I'm gonna drop the link. So we'll like practice, practice thinking of strategizing. Um, copy link. Let me share it in the chat. I think you have to take off screen sharing for a second to view the chat. Okay. Oh, oh, okay. I found it. Cool. Mm -hmm. So for this, actually, so I have um, two different prompts. So, and this is common. This is kind of like similar to UX strategy slash whiteboarding challenges. Um, and so for this one, the prompt, I have two prompts. So you guys can like, pick any one you want to use um, for the first one. And also at the end, I'll leave some time for Q&A as well. Um, and so I'll kind of like guide through how, how we would approach this. So the, I have two prompts. The first one is more broad. The first one is like, how would you do, determine like design like a time travel tool? The second one is actually from my design challenge at Google. And so basically got mentor mentee app. So let me know which one you guys want to focus on or we can do both of them at the same time. I kind of have just like both to choose. And if you're not on the Figma, feel free to join and join me on Figma for a workshop. And so I guess we can go to the first one since this is more relevant to like interviews and stuff. Um, so basically they want to just design like an experience for students to connect with mentors and mentees with each other. And this is like pretty broad. It could be, um, it could be like different students, each other, so new students. So it could be like um, upperclassmen helping underclassmen discover to adjust the campus life. It could be like a website, it could be like an app, it could be like a club, it could be anything. Um, so. Yeah, so I guess like for this, um, these are all sticky notes. So um, are you guys all comfortable with Figma? Okay, perfect. So I can just duplicate these and then write anything you want in the notes. And then, and so like why and like help students feel more welcome. So I understand these are kind of small, um, but I can expand the text a bit. So feel free to like drop anything you want. Um, any anything that feel like you it resonates with it and like why, like for example, like you want to help students feel more welcome. And let me just make the text bigger really quick. Um, Grace, I think we're all on view only access. Oh <laughs> okay, <laughs> let me change that. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Great. Cool. Yeah, feel free to dump anything you want and um, and then we can like critique it together. I'm just making the fonts bigger. Yeah, any color, you can use any color you want, um, however you feel, and you can both review it. So um, yeah, so this is oftentimes what you do during like a whiteboarding interview, um, and also like when you're aligning with your team in the beginning stages of the product. And so I guess like we can both, we can start with the mentorship app. And I just like copy and pasted this from my design challenge, but people like published it all over the internet as well. 
And so while I think helping students feel welcome, um, yeah, feel free to like duplicate. You can press Alt drag is like a shortcut. So if you click on the sticky note and like click on it and like hold Alt hop option on, on the Mac option and then drag and then you'll make a duplicate. Yeah, and so it's really important to understand the why, what you're solving for, kind of like helping students feel more welcome, adjust smoothly, so stronger community, really important, like community building, networking, career field. Yeah, all these are really important reasons why. And so also for the what and prioritize, it kind of goes of a scoop of UX strategy, but it helps give like an overall context of like what all these ideas are to are going towards. And so who could be like freshmen to seniors or professors to students? Um, when and where it could be like during orientation um, or during a new quarter? Also, let me know if anyone has trouble accessing the Figma. Um, let me resend the link so everyone can edit. And so for this, we're actually just going to do sticky notes for like the ideas and then we can like rank them among the priority. Yeah, let me make more sticky notes on the bottom. And then just looking at the time um, and overall, do you guys want to do another one as well or keep it to just one? Um, because for the solve, it kind of goes beyond a school of UX strategy, but in Figma, if you want to draw, there's like a pencil tool where you can, oh, not this one. There's like um, a drawing tool. Oh, where did, oh yeah, it's really, yeah. Um, let me increase the width. So you can start just like drawing how your solution would look like. We can like help review them together. Yes, yeah, so who, so why? Yeah, definitely helping students feel more welcome. And definitely it's hard adjusting to campus. When I think about my time from high school to college, I was like super lost and like, not sure what communities I want to go in, because it's definitely really valid. And helping students network, 
that's also important as well and think about like how they want to do the career because ultimately a goal of going to college is to get a job and so it's important to know like what jobs fit them the most so all these are super valid and then who audience be new students yeah correct and then um, helping students they want to be part of the program so like think of if you want to separate this app by like majors or like career disciplines um, or like school of engineering school of business um yeah definitely new ex and experienced students learning about campus life and whether and then these this kind of like raises questions of of do you want to keep it to like academics only to think of the scope or do you want to like have this app to help mentors and mentees match within like an interest group like chinese student association or like um, athletics like cross country and track um or do you want to just keep it to like academics and like networking only? And so these are just like questions to ask when you want to think about um, how the scope of the project and where you're going and things you want to think out loud during a whiteboarding challenge interview is to ask the interviewer like what the scope of it is because you can go like a lot of different directions with this. Um, and yeah, gen definitely also general audience, students, alumni, teachers. Um, and yeah, reaching out to them for help because one of the pain points I've also noticed is that it's kind of intimidating asking for help. So another problem we could be solving is like reducing that friction of asking people for help and like how an app or like how a product or how um, a design can like help make asking for help easier um, or make it like less intimidating to reach out to these people. Or maybe they could be on the app too and just like be on the app saying like, oh, I'm open to new connections or like open to helping students by like putting stuff out there. So all these like different things to consider when you think about designing an app. And then when, where? Yes, during orientation. So people know what it is because generally people are more, what I've noticed during orientation is that people are more open to like meeting new people, um, finding out more things and like getting more involved during the start of the quarter. So this is definitely a good place to launch this product is when everybody's paying attention and everyone wants to meet, wants to meet new people because like during week five, people are kind of dead with midterms and stuff. And so yeah, context and like when you want to launch a product is super important, like timing and also how is it Fit the overall context um, and yes definitely during orientation um, so that that's what most people are paying more attention because um, the oftentimes orientation is also mandatory as well so that's why you get more attention um, and it was, oh yeah definitely some form of regularly scheduled meetings so people know what's going on it's also really important um, and yeah it's also people like also like because they know they're meeting so they know they should do something about it or like they know they have some like action items and also available status definitely um that also helps like reduce the friction of like asking help to asking professors help because like when i was a freshman i felt like so scared asking my professors for help i was afraid that like i might sound like i'm too like noob or something or like too inexperienced um, so just having that out there or like I'm like scared that I might be bothering that person. Um, so just having this out there would be really important. And so for the what? Um, yeah, definitely like partnering up with new students and organizing monthly check-ins. Definitely check-ins are really important to increase like keeping that connection warm. Um, program, pairs, mentors, mentees. Definitely. I've actually, so for this, um, I actually designed something like a Tinder to match <laughs> mentors and mentees. <laughs> um, yeah, so definitely did something similar um, where mentors can sign up and mentees. Or uh, actually like automatic matching for my own project. Um, and just taking the mental model of the user and like looking at common apps people in this this demographic use, that swiping matching um, behavior of Tinder was what I incorporated in my app design. I talked about that. Um, and yeah, and also, yeah, I like the idea of opening up to different professionals as well um, to help bridge the gap between um, career and academics. Also mentoring, also really important and matching them based on academics and skills or interests. Yeah, definitely pairing is important as well. Oh, and sharing questions and events with mentors. Um, and yeah, like again, again, like getting the help they need. Um, and then program to pair students, 
Yeah, definitely. Also a timeline, also like action items we're going to go. Cause like another pain point I kind of discovered through like mentorship is that people don't really know what mentorship is and like what to ask for, for a mentor. So it's good to have like a timeline or an actual structure to what you want to accomplish with your mentor. Yeah, so um, I guess for now, we can also like think about what ideas you want to choose. Or with the time left, we can also go to the time travel one if you guys are interested in that one too. That one's like way more open ended. Do you guys have a preference? Okay. I think I'm down to look at the other one too. I want to see what's going okay. on. Cool, let's us do the time travel one. So um, this one's one I also pulled from an interview question. Um, so scientists recently discovered a way to time travel. People can go back and forward in time without any consequences to timeline. So for example, if you go back in time, you won't um, change history. Um, and as one, of the new, as one of the first designers of your time machine, you've been tasked with creating an experience from time traveling tourists. And what kind of experience would you create? So you can like, put anything you want and so like why do you want to like understand history do you want to see in the future so you can better prepare for that and so like anything goes and like who do you want to be open to everybody do you want to be open to kids um open to yeah anyone um when and where like why when people would use this app if you're curious like it's like vacation time they have pto from work um and things like that so yeah you can just like put any ideas you guys have Oh, so Allison asked, will it go under self? Yeah, so yes, it would definitely be sketches or wireframes of the app. And so this is when, I guess I'll do an example. Um, and you guys can continue adding to the when and where um, for the time travel one and definitely like a solution. So this is when you like open your pen um, and solve. So let me just open my pencil tool. So let's just choose an example of like one of these students, um, one of these examples, like a program to pair um, time pair professionals and students and having an actionable timeline. So you'll like definitely have an overall wireframe. Oops, let me open up my pencil. So, ooh, okay. Haven't drawn a fake one too much, but ultimately you'll be like, this is like the first screen and then you draw like a wireframe. So you want to be mentor or mentee. Yeah, this is kind of a little hard. So um, this could also be done during wireframing or pencil twin. So this is like more like in real life, you'll like use a pencil. But for the context of this, since it's difficult writing on this, you would just like create um, screens. And then just say, let me just make this color a little bit lighter. So there's that. Um, and then you be like, choose between, are you a mentor or a mentee? Or maybe you, in the beginning, you can do like a button of whether you want to do mentor or mentee. And just like have a really rough wireframe with the app with some really basic copy. Like a two call to action buttons. And then just kind of do a simple flow like that. And then this is like the first screen. This is a very, very um, basic one, but during an interview, you typically do something like this, but on like a drawing, like a whiteboarding thing. Uh, but virtually, I would imagine it would be like um, solving one virtually like in Figma. So let's say someone chose mentee. 
um, and it'd be like, describe your interests. And so I can like match you. Let's say you chose mentee. And like describing your interests. And then you can maybe do like a checkbox to see um, what people are interested in. Maybe make this a little bit lighter to make a checkbox. Oops. People can like check and then just kind of go go towards like different flows like that. And like, etc. So basically just like overall flow with the app and how you would be able to um, justify each time. So let's say like that they want, it's important to know the demographic. And so making sure that everybody who uses the app either defines themselves as like a mentor or mentee, and then it's important to cater towards their interests so they can be matched with the right mentor or mentee. And so this is like a base overview. Oh yeah, you're welcome. And then after you kind of ideate through the solve session, you want to think of how. So how would this actually be launched? So with this, after you kind of summarized everything, like, um, so this is like basically strategy. Um, so like after you want to solve everything, you want to be like, oh, this app would be solved, would be like released during orientation. So how would be just like share during orientation to all students? So orientation is only for new students. So share during week one of the quarter. Because usually that's when like everybody is like putting their club boots and stuff and getting people more involved. And so sharing during week one, the quarter to all students, um, also email to all students. And then matching happens like week two after they fill out their profile and stuff to making sure more students are on there. Um, and then activities will be planned and so on. So this is just like a really, really quick demo. Um, but this is kind of like the questions you also like kind of questions you want to be asking yourself and questions you want to be thinking out loud during these interviews and all of these like skills are transferable to when you're actually working in design because oftentimes at EA I run a lot of workshops. Uh, I don't run, I, I'm like I help out. I don't actually like run the whole thing, but like I help my team out and like participate in leading their different workshops with like different product managers brand designers, engineers, to help align things together. And we often use Miro, um, but I use Figma just because for the sake of this demo. Um, and Miro is like not free, and that's why. Um, so yeah, so like all these skills, not only are they good for interviewing, you wanna also be asking why, who, when, where, what, and ideas, and like how are you solving that during um, your whole career basically as a designer. Cool, I guess like I can also open the floor up to Q&A or let me just like quickly go over the time travel one. Oh yes, traveling back in time to restudy moves made during a time of the crisis. Yes, navigating pandemic, that's also really important um, to see what things worked and didn't work in the past to learn. A lot of people stream this experience of time traveling, open 
similar to traditional traveling, open the opportunity for people. Yes, that's also great as well. Hope one day we can do this in the future. Uh, just like you're traveling to space, traveling to different time zone uh, or different like timeline in history would be great. Um, finding the audience. So people interested in time travel, potentially scientists. Yes, great. Um, scientists, health professionals, and those who have acute professional contribution to make the study, basically catered towards brought to normal civilians afterwards. Yes, that's also important to find. Not opening it to everybody because you never know what people are and just like opening up to like professionals first who aim to use this tool to better like humankind, I guess. Yeah, so it's important to like focus on like the niche first before like opening up to like every single person in the world. Um, and when aware, not be seen, but they would need to be seamlessly be able to travel with no hiccups. Tourists may want to go to specific monuments in specific time, definitely. And just determining like how you want to determine like certain times. Like, do you want someone to go to like year 1920 or like year 1930 um, and things like that instead of like year 1921, April 12th at 9 p.m. And just like being just like also like outlining like the requirements and different time periods you can go to or they can enter their own time and go but then it kind of goes back to like moderating everything to making sure that um they're not in they're not going to be in the middle of like a war or something like that and so there's like all these different constraints you can think of this is more like a blue sky idea um but just like like good to like get better at doing these challenges to like think about what you can do and just like think about the how might we's because in design it's like really open world, open like to anything. Um, and travelers would want to make travel plans based on that they can reach their end goal. And this will be understanding the approach to take people suffering the pandemic. Yes, it's good to narrow down goals. Like let's just say you just want to open up this time travel tool to doctors, scientists to kind of resolving the pandemic and just like making sure that the time zones, like like the, the time zones people can travel, the timeline people can travel to are only open to the pandemic and like the resources to prepare themselves to be ready to be prepared in that pandemic um like the influenza like the spanish flu like what have people been doing in like different ways to like observe and communicate with that people in that time zone all these like guidelines and stuff or if they want to travel to the bubonic plague like how do people interact making sure that um like the scientist is interacting like behaviorally using the same vocabulary as the people in that time zone to, to find out what they're doing and making sure that I don't like look like an outsider. So all these little constraints you can think of. And also what? So a feature embedded time traveling device allowing time travel tourists and the ability to decide what they want to go based on the event, location, and time period. And also giving them a glimpse of what a time period is like. Definitely guidelines, like kind of like tour books, like let's say like avoid monkeys or like monkeys can like jump on your shoulder if you're here, just like little things like that. Um, and organized travel plans, yes. Also in groups like travel itinerary, how, studying how they would deal with the situation, how to come with safety measures and coordinating the plan. Yes, very, very, this is like a very similar to like tourism and time travel, like time tourism. This is really cool, great ideas. Um, and I know we have like 11 minutes left, so feel free to let me know if you have any questions like via unmuting or via the chat, because I have the chat open, so um, I can see it too. Cool. Uh, yeah, this would be a great time to ask any questions you have. Feel free to just talk out loud if you want, or go ahead and type it in the chat. But yeah. Hi, um, I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I know you mentioned in your slides that you should have certain goals to like mm -hmm. measure your project success and everything. Mm -hmm. I was just wondering like, what are some of your personal goals that you look into whenever? So it depends a lot. Um, I guess I can show an example too. Yeah. Um, so goals can be like improving the user experience or aligning to a business goal. And so for me, um, let me just show an example actually. This will make more sense. Let me open up my case study. Oh, let me just resume. Let me just share to my new screen. And so for the, this is like all like non-NDA. I changed all the NDA data. So um, 
Yeah, so like, for example, my project I did was EA Help, and then my objective was to increase the task completion rate so people can find the help that they need um, to save the business more time and also improve the user experience. So it hits both user needs and business goals. And so the goals I would do is I would look at the problem, like people are just being confused over all and just like being confused, like how, what actions they could take. Um, and then what I looked at, so I basically looked at the market research, what the competition is doing um, and looking at similar flows and how I incorporate and incorporating some of that into my wireframes, um, doing a few iterations, determining pros and cons, um, also like highlighting what I mean by like explaining my designs and what whether they like balance user needs or business goals. Um, and, and after making some iterations, I did some testing and I looked, looked at task completion rate, satisfaction rate, and qualitative feedback. So task completion rate relates to making sure people know how to actually complete it. And um, it was ultimately saved the business more time and also like helped uh, correlate the satisfaction rate. So I would ask qualitatively like how the users felt, how easy it was and how enjoyable it was, ranging from like one to 10 and some qualitative feedback. So how I did this was I always like listened, I always like made the users like talk out loud and I would record some like quotes and stuff to gather in my data. And so, yeah, this is like, the, like these are the metrics I've collected, which aligns to the overall goal of enabling players to help, to find the help they need on their own and why it's reducing number of support tickets sent to save the company more time. Oh, and Allison, oh, okay, let me, I saw some questions. Um, so, Sinran asked, how have you recommend using UX strategy in a personal product? Yeah, great question. So, um, I'll show an example, actually. So, I've made a game called Selfie. Um, so, this is like, I guess, like, I can do design buddies as well. I did some strategy on that as well. I didn't actually test anything. Um, let me think, because I have both examples. Because so design buddies is a personal project, too. And I've actually looked at um, the problem. I highlighted a problem, making sure that it actually exists. Um, I like did this, by, I, I survey a lot of users um, and then looking at the value proposition, like how does my the community stand out amongst like other ones? Um, Cause we have a casual open culture, which is different from Slack and we have free resources to making sure everything's ungated and people get the help they need. Um, and highlighting like our rally proposition. Um, and so all these things I kind of touched on in my presentation, like impact processes. Um, and this is like not a traditional case study. I'm also working, this is still a work in progress. I'm just getting feedback and to making it align more to the overall goal. But this is what I got after the feedback I got so far. And so that's another example of personal project. Another example is um, Selfie, which is a game I made. It's not a really UX, pro it's a, a product. So it's not traditional app or mobile, it's a VR game. And so for me, I've looked at objective, um, the goals, and um, how, the, how, how, how it solves the problem, um, talking about the different designs. And um, I also look at, I also, Oh, I forgot to include this, but like I also talked about how I would measure success um, in that product. So is this still a work in progress? I'm still actually working on a portfolio, but in my old version, I actually had um, measuring task completion rate and measuring like retention rate of the users to see if like doing some A-B testing, like, so I would just say like A-B testing, like a game with quest, a game without quest and seeing which one is more engaging and helps the user learn more at the end. Cause Selfie is like an educational game aim to teach biology to users, the students. Um, and Nisha asks, what are your favorite platforms for designing and brainstorming? I guess design, I love Figma. Brainstorming, I also like Figma. And brainstorming, I also just like dumping a lot of ideas and like running them by people and getting their feedback on them. Um, and Miro is also a great tool. It's like a virtual whiteboard, but it costs money. Um, and I'm just used to having Figma. Miro is actually more smoother than like Figma in terms of like moving sticky notes and brainstorm. So Miro, um, I'll put in the note, it's Miro. It's a virtual whiteboard. I just like put it in there. Um, and yeah. And then Allison asks, how do you usually find metrics for the sites? Yeah, I asked the product managers. They usually have data on that as well. And I had to like change that data um, for my case study, but yeah, I asked product managers. Um, and Nisha asked, do you have a favorite font? Yes, I do. I 
Um, and yeah, I like pop-ins. I use pop-ins on my slides. So I'm a pop-ins and open sans. I, my site, I use space grotesque because I was trying to find like a serif font um, to match with my sans serif font. And, um, but I feel like space grotesque looks a bit more old school. So I'm actually in the process of changing everything to Poppins just because it fits my personality more. Um, so Poppins is my favorite. Poppins plus open stands like my slides. I'm continuing working on my personal brand as well. <laughs> and cool. And so Allison asks, mid off topic, confused with the flow of getting experience, currently sophomore with design experience, applying for internships for the summer, or should we work on redesign case study both mobile? Yeah, great question. Um, I was actually in that position a year ago. Um, I would just like focus on doing projects. So but how I started design, I actually have an article on this, but how I started design was taking an online class and this court bookmarks. This is my first ever case study I did. I recently redesigned this whole thing so it fits my overall site more. Um, and so it was actually a redesign. And I like redesign for my first project, but after doing one redesign, I wouldn't go back to doing one just because you're making a lot of assumptions of the, the product itself. And, um, but redesign is good because you already have an existing product to work with and different pain points, different markets you can look into and design systems. So you don't have to create everything from scratch. Um, and, but you're also making a lot of assumptions and stuff. So this is an example. Like I can also send it in the chat if it helps. And, and this is how I basically got into design is by doing this for this class called students who design. I don't think they're doing it anymore. Who dot design, but it was like this class that helped me a lot and it was free. It was like a free 10 week online course. Oh yeah. I can link my portfolio. Yeah. This is my, I recently redesigned it. Um, my old one looks like really, really different. Um, I, Redesigned, I like finally merged the URL like last weekend too. So it's like still super new. Um, and Koopa asked, how would you personally prioritize over stakeholders perspectives in some cases? Um, yeah, I guess it really depends. I would see, I would just like, when I'm, I guess, talking from my experience at EA, um, I prioritize user over stakeholders. Yeah, so I would just try to, as a UX designer, I focus a lot on the users because the behavior of the users drives the overall performance of the business. And so um, for the users, I would say like, oh, for example, the EA help, um, like it's important to making spend time actually making the flow good for the users because they submit less tickets to the business. So that saves the business more time. And they also are feeling happier. So they're less toxic on the platform, which affects the business's reputation and their overall picture. So. That's how I would prioritize the users while justifying how it aligns in the business. And I would never ignore the business. So for example, um, and for the business, I've also like in my design, I've highlighted, um, so for the new, new, new ones, after I did some testing, subsequent iterations, I show trending games. So new games that the user could use to, to like buy and stuff to, display for marketing. So not only like I also incorporate the user's goals to finding the help they need, like all the actions that they need for help are over here, but also displayed some of the marketing and also the uh, advertisement here to align with both users and business. And so I guess I try to find a balance of both and just trying to stay aligned with my team and making sure that um, I'm like getting feedback every time I make a new design to doesn't stray away from the overall strategy of the product. Thank you. I yeah. don't think we have any more questions. Last round, any more questions? Now or never? Okay, <laughs> I don't see any more questions, but thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. Hope all that's helpful, that. yeah. Yeah, I think the whiteboarding exercise was very interesting. I've never done one, so I was like. Cool. Yeah, I've done a few. Uh -huh. I haven't like done one officially for an interview, but I did a design challenge, which are like similar, like asynchronously doing an interview, and I learned a lot from that. Yeah. Um, yeah, what Allison said, thank you. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Happy to help. Yeah, Um. so it's four, so. Yes. Yes. We are done for today. Thank you so much for everyone who came out. Thank you so much to Grace for sharing all that.
Yeah, you're um, welcome. Hope you guys all learned something new and feel prepared for interviews. Yeah, um, this whole thing was recorded, so, and in our mailing list, this will come out again, so thank you to everyone who came out. Um, hope you enjoyed this. Happy Sunday. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Happy Sunday. Happy